For our third technique, we're going to look at dry brushing. All right, dry brushing is a technique of applying paint in a very, very dry manner, meaning it's almost pure paint. We don't add a lot of um, medium or water to it and apply it directly on top of a dry surface, a dry painted surface, or a damp surface. We don't, um, we don't wet blend it. What I've created here is a wet blend between uh, a fire red, uh, more, more of a brilliant red, into a, um, a, a yellow ochre to create sort of a wet blend. Uh, it isn't very smooth. I went very brushy with this, but it is just slightly damp. It, it is almost dry, all right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of our two inch brushes. Um, I'm going to wet it just like we have all talked about just to kind of prep our bristles, but I'm going to dry it out pretty well. I'm going to get a lot of that water, that moisture out of it. And I'm going to use, again, the same palette we have, but what I have is I have our burnt umber and I'm going to just dab into this. Now this has a little bit of medium in it, a little bit of water, that's fine. I'm gonna drag through this. And if you look at the bristles, you can kind of start to see, see how they're all starting to splay out? They're starting to spread apart. What I can do is I can kind of even dab that. I really wanna work with that kind of, that kind of splayed out kind of a, a, a effect that's happening, all right? So with the dry brushing, what you'll usually do, this is this technique's often used with, with a lot of uh, wood graining or if we're trying to add a linear texture. Um, so what we're gonna do is, the best way to think about this is like an airplane uh, landing on a landing strip and it just kind of lightly kisses the, the runway as it comes across. So in this case, I'm gonna kind of drag this across and I might wiggle a little bit. And what I get is this, kind of dry brushy, kind of the, the, the look of a very dry kind of paint. It's very similar to when we first looked at the raw paint right out of the can and how that had a, uh, a like it would, the paint would pull apart. It would fall apart as it touched the, the, uh, the uh, paint surface. All right, so I'm gonna add some more paint I'm going to load it up a little bit, but I'm going to start dabbing it to kind of get some of that, those hairs all sprayed apart. And then I can kind of pull that through. I might add a little bit more, right? So I'm just, the color choices here are uh, irrelevant. It's mainly about the, uh, the process. You can see I'm going to go the other direction for, for fun. But the idea is to give a very linear kind of wood grain feel to it. It almost it feels like bark or uh, maybe another type of, of texture. But you know, in this case, I'm using red and brown. If you use different browns, different uh, maybe greens and such, you can get a more natural looking um, texture. All right, so a couple things to think about this. This is another way that you can do sort of cross hatching. So let's do another little area where I need to load my brush again. Um, let's add in some of this here. We're gonna dab it. You can do a cross hatch, which means you can drag this in both directions to give sort of a cross hatch look to this. All right. Uh, we use dry brushing sometimes whenever we're trying to show things like uh, roundness or the texture of, say, a tree. I can take this and, and as I, and mind you, dry brushing means a lot of dipping, but I can take this same mixture. And as I pull and drag, I can get the feeling of the roundness of something, almost like maybe a birch tree, all right? This is uh, hard to do with this small. I'm used to doing this on a large canvas. So I can kind of get this feeling of almost like a, like a tree branch, you know, as, it, as it's kind of rounded, you know? So, you know, by using other brushes and such, you can you would have uh, some different variety in uh, the actual outline of the tree if that was what it is. But in this case, it kind of gives you an idea how um, you could create just a quick little wisps to give the feeling of birch bark or uh, a different type of roundness to a tree or such. Okay, 
So practice with this a little bit. Try doing a, find a, a, a material, um, try to decipher whether it be tree bark, whether it be uh, another, another material that has the same kind of linear texture through it or crosshatch type texture. Decipher the colors, separate them out, mix them, and then apply them. So you'll have to always start with some sort of a base color, uh, either as a wet blend, a scumble, or even a stipple, depending on what, what your material looks like. And then take a brush and just dab it in, into the final color to do your, your um, dry brush technique. With a major production, a large bit of scenery, often what we'll do is we'll keep um, older brushes that have really got a lot of wear on them. They've been really worn down. This brush was probably this long originally, and you wear it down. We'll trim them up, make them all stubby like this. And this allows us to do the same thing, to do a dry brush that's a little, you know, in this case I did more watery, but we can get dry brush techniques and a much wider stroke doing the same thing. And because it has shorter bristles, it tends to uh, be a little more natural, especially with the wood grain techniques. So uh, we always keep our old brushes around and sometimes chop them up. So they kind of give a different textures. All right, so do your sample, practice a little bit, see if you can find um, your example to, to copy, to make your, your sample and uh, post it online, all right? We'll see you on the next one.